same exact information. You kind of have to understand, though, what at most means. If you have at most $8 in your pocket, at most $8, how much money could you potentially have in your pocket? Could, could you have $8? Could you have $9? No. no, but you could have 8 right? Could you have 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 Negative? No, your pockets can't be. This would be negative. Right? Your pockets can't be. Negative. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, you, you can't have negative, but you could have, in order to satisfy this, Zero, you can have zero dollars, right? That's at most. It's not even anything. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or you could have eight. Somehow I get nine out of that. You could get you could get up to eight, including eight, and that would satisfy at most. Does that make sense? Less than, what if I had said less than eight? If I said less than eight, would eight be included in that? No. No, it would be seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, or zero. If I said at least eight, at least eight. That would be eight. eight included, and then what? Nine, ten, or more than that. If I said more than eight, more than eight, would that be included in more than eight? Would eight be included in that? If you have more than eight dollars, do you have eight dollars? So you have nine, or ten, or eleven, or twelve, or fourteen, fourteen. That's the interplay there between the at most, at least, more than, less than. You need to know, you need to really know those in order to get these problems right. So we're looking at at most eight. At most, eight means you could have zero, one, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight. Number four is that come up in your ten rolls. Are you, are you with this? So, this is kind of interesting. We just said that zero would satisfy this, right? Zero successes. Zero successes would satisfy this. Remember, this is successes here. If I get no fours, is that at most eight? We also said, or you could get one four. Would one four, one success, would one success, one four, satisfy at most eight? Or you could have two successes. Would two successes, two fours, satisfy at most eight? You with me on this? Or three, or four, or five. Or six, or seven, or eight. Do you agree with me that any of these situations would satisfy this situation? Either zero, or one, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight. Do you remember the or? We talked about the or. Hopefully you did go back and refresh your memory on what or means. How do I calculate the probability of an or? What do I do with those? This is a probability of zero occurring, or one occurring, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight. You add all those probabilities together because that's an addition rule. <coughs> this is an addition rule for disjoint sets. You can't have both three successes and four successes. Can you? Can you get both? Three fours and four fours when you're rolling the die ten times? Can you get a certain number of successes and a different number of successes? For instance, imagine your head. You're rolling the die ten times, okay? One, two, you're rolling the die. Can you get, out of your ten rolls, can you get both three fours only, exactly three fours, and four fours at the same? Can you get both of those, exactly three fours and exactly four fours? Those cannot happen at the same time. You can't, you, you can't get that. So here, when we're, when we're doing this, these are disjoint sets, disjoint outcomes. We add them all up. We don't have to worry about a crossover. That's what I'm trying to say here. There's no crossover. There's no and of them happening at the same time. We just add up each of those probabilities. So the probability of rolling at most eight fours comes down to the probability of rolling zero, plus the probability of rolling one, plus two, plus three, plus four, five, six, seven, and eight. How do we find each of these probabilities? <laughs> the robot right there. It's that right there. Can't you find the probability of zero? Let's do this real quick. Let's see what the probability of zero would be. Probability of zero. Is that rolling a zero? Does that mean rolling a zero, folks? What does probability of zero mean? 
No fours. It means you have zero successes. It's not the probability of rolling a one. I don't care about that. What I care about is, is one success. It wasn't the probability of rolling eight. That was definitely not an eight. We don't even, can't even roll eight. This was the probability of rolling eight fours or getting eight successes. How many people understand the difference between those things? Good. You kind of have to to really get this stuff. Otherwise, you should be asking a question or, or kind of thinking about this a little bit. So this is not the probability of rolling a zero. That can't even happen. All we can get is one through six. This is not the probability of rolling a one. We don't care about that. This is not the probability of rolling a four. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I care about how many fours I'm rolling. This is the probability of rolling zero fours out of 10. This is the probability of rolling one four out of 10. This is the probability of rolling two fours out of 10, or eight fours out of 10. Do you see the difference there? Imagine if you do. Okay, that's, that's the big point here. So the probability of rolling zero fours out of 10, what would our x become? Zero, sure. Would our n change? Uh, would our n change? No. Would our x change? Yes. That would now become a zero. Would our p change? No. X would become zero. Q would become would change. N minus x that would become ten. Ten. Right. This would be zero. That would be ten. This would be zero. Uh, n choose zero would still be something that you need to calculate. It would still happen on your calculator. It's not going to become zero. This probability does exist. You'd have to do that for this one. Then you'd have to do that for this one and do that eight times and add them all up. Do you want to do that? Why not? It's super fun. <laughs> we just did it. This was exciting. Exciting stuff. Yeah, it takes way too long. It takes way too long. So you could do it, though, couldn't you? Here's one, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine formulas that you would have to do nine times. Each time, the only thing that would be changing is x, and you'd redo your formula, find out this number nine times, and add them all up. However, some guy had a lot of time on his hands. It was me, and has done this. <laughs> and has done this for you. You don't see what's what's done for you. It's kind of awesome. Do you remember how I told you that this action, this whole act of doing this, really had nothing to do with the fact that we were rolling a four? It had to do with the fact that we had ten trials, and we're trying to find eight successes with a certain probability. And you agreed with that. And you said, okay, yeah, it's really nothing to do with the four. It's all about the number of successes. Some guy realized that. And he made up a chart that basically does your work for you. So in the book that magically appeared in my hands, <laughs> what you're going to find on page, write this down, 749. Let's see if you can see that. Show and tell. 749, you get this nice table thing. Looks like that. And what's at the very top is binomial probabilities. Remember how we're talking about binomial probabilities just right now? Binomial probabilities, some guy did all your work for you, and he found all the probabilities to the fourth decimal place uh, third decimal place, sorry, of all the situations that we'll accomplish or that we'll have to face in this in this book. Here's how to read your table here. If you read your table, it says binomial probabilities on the top. I want you to notice up at the top left hand, it says some letters we should be kind of familiar with. What do you see? I see N. N stands for what? Number of... X stands for? Number of successes. Successes, for sure. It's not based on the value you're trying to get, it's the number you're trying to get. Uh, also, there's another letter. What's that letter? Can you read that? Is your eyesight that good? That's a, that's a P. Why don't you turn those lights off for me, would you? Good. Cool. A little bit better. That's the, the P. That's the probability of getting... Is this the probability of getting two successes, or is this the probability of each individual success right here? Each individual this, These are the probabilities of getting a certain number of successes. That's kind of cool. It does the work for you. So this is the probability of getting each individual success based on this information. Here's your N. Here's the number of successes you're looking for. Now, you'll notice that if you'll have two trials, there's only three situations you could have. Zero successes, one success, or two successes. That's it. 
Same thing with three trials. You have zero, one, two, or three. It builds as you keep going through and going through. So let's see if we can do our problem. I hope you remember the probability over here was uh, 0.00144, right? Let's go ahead and try to find our situation on this on this table over here. What was our n in our rolling the dice situation? Four. Let's keep going. We have. I'm seeing here's n. N is nine. Right down here, n is ten. So we should be in this this segment right over here, where n is ten. Are you with me, folks? Yes. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for the number of successes that we were trying to find. Now, in our situation, we were looking for how many successes exactly? Eight. Looking for eight successes. That's not zero, one, two. We're eight successes. And the probability of each success was how much? 30%. 30%. Okay, so what we're going to do, probability of success, we're finding that. We're finding n is 10. Eight successes we're looking for. Let's, let's see where those things cross. 0 0.001. We were more accurate, weren't we? Mm -hmm. We were 0 0.0014. But that's that's the same value. That's what the guy found. He just rounded to three decimal places. So we can find that value 0 0.001 just by looking at the table. Now, why are, why are we doing this? We could just do the formula. Well, when we are looking for the probability of at most, oh, geez, at most eight, that meant zero or one or two, or three, and we would have to do the formula nine times to find out at most eight successes. Remember that? Can you find the probability of zero successes just by looking at this? Yeah. Yeah. It's right here. Yeah. That one. It's 0 .028. That's great. How about the probability of one success? Oh, it's 1.21. Someone's already done the math for you. Two successes, 0 .233. Three successes, 0 .267. How can I find the probability of at most eight successes? What am I going to do with those values I was just reading to you? Yeah. Let's just add them. We know that this was addition rule, right? So I, what we had up here on the board was the probability of zero plus the probability of one plus the probability of two successes plus three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just add from here down to and including the eight. Here's what you have to be good at. Okay, Everybody's going to know to do this. It's not hard. You just go to your N, the, the X is listed for you, I mean, even letters are there, the P's listed for you. You just have to know what at most means, at least means, more than and less than. You have to know basically whether to include this eight or not, whether to add up all these or all these, that's what you have to know. Also, one little piece of information, the zero plus, just use zero for that. Zero plus means less than one thousandth, so point zero 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 something, that's what that means. Uh, so you would be able to find that on a calculator. This won't let you do that. Okay, so you, you, you have to use zero for that. So for us, let's go ahead and do that. Let's write these down, 0 0.028, 0 0.121, 0 0.233, 0 0.267, 0 0.200, and so on until you get to the 8, okay? <laughs> write those down because I'm going I'm to show you how to do this on a calculator. Should have like point nine 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 nine. Good. What no? Point nine nine nine? Yeah. Oh yeah, point nine nine nine. Do you have all those written down? Does anybody have all those written down? Yes. Okay, good. I'll write them in just a second.